Hello everyone, welcome to Screencast SC10000. In today's screencast, we are going to configure and create the VLANs on the RFS controller and the adaptive APs. So let's get started. So what exactly are we going to be configuring in today's screencast? We will learn how to create a static IP address on the RFS 7000 using the serial console. We'll create the VLANs as well as configure them on the RFS. We'll map these VLANs uh, to the RFS on a certain port and we'll learn how to trunk that port. We'll configure a default gateway on the RFS and finally we'll learn how to create VLANs and trunks uh, on the AP uh, using the AP profiles. Uh, consider a uh, wireless enterprise like Motorola. The RF switch uh, could be somewhere in the NOC like Schomburg and we could have APs deployed at remote sites, uh, for example San Jose. What we intend to do today is uh, create a corporate VLAN 9 which would reside on the AP only uh, and the AP would locally bridge packets. Uh, and for other VLANs like the VLAN 7 and 8 which are guest and consultant uh, the network admin has decided to have those packets tunnel back to the RFS controller and the RFS controller route those packets. Uh, the main hardware components required uh, in this uh, topology are going to be the RFS controller only. Uh, the reason is the uh, configuration for the AP would be defined in an AP profile and when any APs adopt on the RFS controller they'll inherit that profile. In the factory default state, the RFS 6000 and the RFS 7000 do not ship with an IP address. Hence, we are going to log in through the serial and set an IP address on VLAN 1. Uh, we will set the IP address to be 192.168.2.100. The default username to log into the uh, RFS 7000 is admin. The password is Motorola. We will be prompted to change the password, so let's change the password to symbol. The first thing we want to do is uh, check the IP address of the RFS 7000. As mentioned earlier, uh, the, there is no IP address uh, defined on the RFS 7000. As you can see, it says unassigned. So let's use the self command to log into the device. Let's go to the interface VLAN 1 and assign it an IP address of 192.168.2.100.24. Let's uh, commit and save our changes. And now let's see what our IP address is. As you can see, we now have an IP address of 192.168.2.100. Let's uh, go ahead and ping our uh, wired server, which is 192.168.2.7. As you can see, our pings are successful. Uh, we should now be able to log into the uh, RFS 7000 using the GUI with the, the username as admin and the password as symbol. On the RFS controller, we have two extended VLANs. One is VLAN 7 and one is VLAN 8. And hence, these VLANs have to be created on, uh, on the controller itself. Now, VLAN 7 does not necessarily have to exist as an L3 SVI. Uh, however, the guest VLAN 8 has to uh, be defined with an IP address because uh, the AP, I mean the controller, essentially redirects, captures and redirects the packets coming from the mobile unit. To log into the RFS 7000, we will use the username as admin. The password had been changed to symbol. Uh, we now need to create uh, VLANs on the RFS 7000, uh, the extended VLANs th which the uh, controller is going to bridge packets over. So let's navigate to configuration. Let's go to device. As you can see, we have our RFS 7000 here. Highlight that, click edit. Uh, navigate to interfaces go to virtual interfaces. Now using the CLI, uh, the serial console, we created a VLAN 1 with an IP address of 192.168.2.100. We have two VLANs, uh, one is VLAN 7 and the other is VLAN 8 that we need to create. VLAN 7 is our consultant VLAN and VLAN 8 is our guest VLAN. For VLAN 7 we do not necessarily have to create an L3 SVI, however we will uh, just create one. So let's click on add. Uh, the VLAN ID is going to be 7. Our description is uh, on this VLAN. It's a consultant VLAN. We will give it a static IP address of 192.168.7.100. It's a slash 24. And click on OK. Exit. Let's create our guest VLAN. Now we have to uh, definitely create a guest VLAN and give it an IP address. The reason for that is 
our guest VLAN essentially uh, redirects, uh, captures and redirects the packets coming from the mobile unit, and hence it has to have an L3 SVI. So we are going to call it the guest VLAN. We, its IP address is going to be 192.168.8.100. It's going to be a slash 24. Let's click OK. Click Exit. Commit and save. So as you can see, we now have uh, three VLANs over here. Uh, one is VLAN 1, the default management VLAN. We've got uh, VLAN 7 and we've got VLAN 8. For the RFS 7000 to bridge packets, we need to configure GE1 as a trunk port and we need to map VLANs 1, 7 and 8 uh, to GE1. We now have to map our VLANs to a wired port. To do so, we navigate to configuration, go to device configuration, highlight our RFS 7000 and click on edit. Uh, let's navigate to interfaces. Uh, initially, we had created our VLANs under virtual interfaces. As you can see, we have our VLAN 7 and VLAN 8 under uh, virtual interfaces. Now let's navigate to Ethernet ports. GE1 uh, is the port that's connected to the uplink Cisco switch in my network, and I need to make this a trunk port, so I'm just going to click on Edit. I'm going to make it a trunk port, and the allowed VLANs on this port are going to be 1, 7, and 8. The 7 and 8 are the extended VLANs that the uh, RFS 7000 needs to bridge packets over. Let's click OK and let's click Exit, commit our changes and save them. Let's define a default gateway for our RFS 7000. Our RFS 7000 does not have a default gateway as yet. Let's go ahead and configure that. To do that, just navigate to configuration go to device configuration, highlight RFS 7000 and click on edit. We will now navigate to network, go down to static routes. As you can see here, uh, to set the default gateway you can use a network address of 0.0.0.0/0 and then set the default gateway. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll uh, click on add row and go ahead and put 0.0.0.0/0. Our default gateway is going to be 192.168.2. 50. 2.50 is uh, the Cisco switch to which uh, GE1 port of, of this RFS 7000 is connected to and hence uh, that is going to be our default gateway. Let's uh, click OK, commit our changes, save it. The AP VLAN is going to be uh, configured using the profiles where we will create a VLAN, VLAN 9 and we will trunk the AP port. To create VLANs on the AP uh, and to trunk the AP port, we'll be doing it from the profile level and not from the device level as we did in the RFS 7000. The reason being, when we have multiple APs that adopt on the RFS switch, we want all of them uh, to have the exact same configuration. So let's uh, go ahead and edit the profiles. To do so, navigate to configuration, go to profiles. As you can see, by default we have an AP7131 profile and an AP650 profile. Uh, let's assume our network is going to have AP 7131s for now, so we'll highlight 7131, click on Edit. Uh, just like we had on the uh, RFS 7000, we're going to go and navigate to Interfaces, go to Virtual Interfaces. By default, uh, the AP would always have VLAN 1 and it would uh, be enabled with DHCP. Uh, let's click on Add to create VLAN 9, which is going to be our corporate VLAN. Uh, again, it is not necessary for us to have an IP address on this uh, VLAN. But just to uh, demonstrate how we can uh, create VLANs on the AP, just click on VLAN. Let's call it Corporate. Uh, let's make sure that we enable DHCP on this uh, VLAN as well, because if we have hundreds of access points coming in, we do not want them to have the exact same IP address. Uh, let's click OK and exit. Commit our changes and save them. Ideally, there was no need to create uh, a VLAN 9 on the interface because the AP is just going to be bridging packets. All we have to do, it, do is uh, map VLAN 9 to the uh, Ethernet port. So in order to do that, let's just go to Ethernet ports. Uh, assume GE1 is uh, connected to the network. We'll click on Edit. As of now, it's, uh, access, uh, it's an access port and it has VLAN 1 uh, mapped to it. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a trunk port. Uh, add VLAN 1 and 9, which essentially means that it's now capable of locally bridging packets uh, on VLAN 9. Save our uh, changes, commit them, save them, and exit out of there.
The configuration file for today's screencast can be downloaded from the link seen on your screen. You should now be able to create and configure your VLANs uh, on the RFS controller and the adaptive APs. Thank you for watching.